Before starting this video, I'd love to thank Relable for sponsoring this entire tree series. The placement season is here. I know a lot of you are planning to sit for companies which come on campus. In case you are disappointed that the top startups like Cred, Upgrad, Razorpay are not hiring directly from your campus, there is an easier way to work here. Just register for the Relable test conducted by Relable by Unacademy and you'll get a chance to apply for front-end, back-end and business development roles at India's top startups and unicorn companies. Relable has 1000 plus openings by 50 plus companies and the best thing is it's absolutely free. So please make sure you check out all the links in the description and give the Relable test as soon as possible. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So today we will be solving the problem finding the right side view or the left side view of a binary tree. So I'll be teaching you how to find a right side view of a binary tree and after that you can definitely do it by yourself how to find the left side view of the binary tree because both of them are almost identical solutions. So right side view what do I mean by that? So you're looking at this binary tree right? So you're looking from uh, this direction like from the front you're looking right? What if I start looking from this direction? Like I, I have an eye placed which like I'm bad at drawing, but yeah, okay. I'm, I'm watching it out from the right side. Which portion of the tree will be visible to me? Over here, I'll see the node 1. Over here, I'll see the node 3. Over here, I'll just see the node 7. Because this 4 and 5 will be like hidden by 7 because I'm looking from this direction. I'm looking from this direction. And from the down, I'll see the node 6. So can I say if I have a right view of this binary tree, I'll have 1, I'll have 3 because 2 will be covered up by 3. I'll have 7 and then I'll have 6. I hope you understand the meaning of right side view. So I want you to write a program that prints this right view of any given binary tree. So ideally, what should be the logic that I should think of? I know traversals, right? I have to traverse in such a way, in such a way that I can say the last node of every level. Can I say the last node of every level will be my rights view? Makes sense because uh, one is the last node of the first level. Three is the last node of the second level. Seven is the last node of uh, these third level. 6 is the last node of this fourth level. So I can say the last node of every level is indeed my right side view. Okay. Can I just reverse this logic and can I say if I traverse the level in this uh, direction, like I travel it like this, I travel it like this, I travel the level in this direction, then can I say the first node, yes, if I'm traveling, like if I'm having a traversal technique, which traverses like this. Can I say the first node at every level, that's one, three, seven, six. The first node at every level will be my right view. Makes sense. Now, what kind of traversals uh, can I apply? Obviously, I can apply a traversal, which is a recursive traversal. Recursive traversal. So one is the recursive traversal that I can apply, right? While the other one is the iterative traversal that I can apply. And what are the traversal techniques that you know? For recursive, you know, in order, pre-order, post-order, correct? And for iterative, you know a traversal which is level order. So let's understand why am I not going with the level order traversal. What is the worst case of level order traversal? I know the level order traversal is definitely going to take a time complexity of big of n. And uh, the space complexity at the worst case, I repeat, at the worst case, uh, if I take a complex full binary tree, then the level order, the Q at the worst case will be storing four nodes, which is almost the half of the nodes, like, which is almost a lot. So the time, the space complexity will be a lot if I consider level order traversal. And in a recursive, in a recursive solution, since I recursively traverse for the binary tree, I know the time complexity will definitely be big of n, but the space complexity will be big of height of the tree. Now you might argue, Striver, what if we are given a tree which is a skew, skew type tree? In that case, we'll end up taking big of n 
space complexity because the recursive solution is going to go from here to here to here to here. So the auxiliary stack space that will be required will be big of n. So you can argue on both the solutions. So I'll, I'll be teaching you the recursive solutions. You can definitely try the iterative solution at the end because at the end, the idea is important. The idea is very much simple. If I traverse, uh, traverse on the uh, level wise, the last node or the first node, depending on which direction are you traveling, will be your right view. Now, why am I going to uh, uh, discuss the recursive solution? The only reason is the code is very short and crisp, while in iterative, uh, the code is a bit lengthier. And in interview, the more clean, the more short, the more crisp code you write, that is what the interviewer will definitely uh, give you an advantage on. So which recursive traversal will I prefer? I'll prefer the reverse pre-order traversal, reverse pre-order. So if you remember, the pre-order was root, left, and then a right. That was the pre-order traversal. I'll have the reverse. Basically, I'll do a root, then I'll do a right, and then I'll do a left. Instead of moving left to right, I'll do a right to left because, because of the same reason. I'm going to move in this direction. And the first node that we get in every right will be my part of the right view. That's why, that's why I'm going to do a root, right, left. So in order to solve this problem, I'll be using a function, recursive function, where I'll be initially passing the node and I'll initially be passing the level. So what is the node initially? That's the starting point or the root of the tree and the level initially will be passed as zero. So these are the things that I'll be passing on to this recursive function. And how the recursive function work? Since it's a, a pre-order kind of a thing like root, right, left, you know, the traversals works like this. Like we're going to keep on doing the traversal till we uh, like if we encounter a null, we are going to return and or else uh, the root is over here, like whatever is the root. And then we are going to move uh, to the right. So very simple. We are moving down. That's to the right. So the level is going to increase by one or I'll move to the left, right? So I'll move to the left, then also the level will increase. So that's how my traversal will look like. But you might ask, but Strava, where are you storing this right view? The answer to that will be very simple. I'll be using a very smart technique. I'll have a data structure ready with me. Okay, let's have a data structure ready, which will initially be empty. And what I do is if, if every time I come to a level for the first time, so I'll compare is the value of level is equivalent to ds dot size. If that's the case, I can say this is the first time I came across to this level. And if I came across to this level for the first time, I'll say ds, why don't you add this node guy? And this will be a part of my right view. Now you might think how will this work? Very simple. Let's do a dry run in order to understand it in a much better way. So initially we are at the node, right? So initial call will be uh, on this node one with a level zero. That's the initial call, right? So we go across if node is null, no. Then level is zero, the data structure size is zero. So this is the first time you're coming to level zero. So you insert this node. So you insert a node one, perfect. Next, you're doing a node, right? So I'll go to a node, right? Which means I'm going to this node three, with an increase in level. So I increase in level and I go to the right. Perfect. Now when I go to this right, I have a node three, correct? So level is one. Is it null? No. Is the level one equivalent to ds dot size? ds dot size is also one. So it is. So first time you're coming to level one. So I'll take this three and I'll insert it. Perfect. Again, there's a node dot right where you'll move. So when you move to this node, it's a node seven with a level bumped up. So the level will be two. So you're moving to uh, level two. Again, you come across and the level two is equivalent to ds dot size indeed. So you'll take the seven and you'll insert it. Next, I again come to node right. So when you come to node right, you reach a null and whenever you reach a null, you are set to return, returned. Next, you went to right and you returned. So there will be a left. So you'll go to the left, you'll again reach null and you'll return. 
So the moment these two conditions are done, you will start going back. Again for three, you went to the right, you will go to the left and it's a null. So that's done. You will return. So the moment you return, the one guy has to go to the left. So you move to the left. Now you come across two comma level one. Very important. From one, you move to three. From one now, you'll move to two. So when you're moving, the level is one, but the DS size is already three. So this means you have filled up three levels. That's level zero, level one, level two. The moment you'll get the next level three, then only you'll fill something. So you'll move here. Next, obviously, uh, you'll move to the right. That's five comma two. Again, nothing to be filled. Then you'll move right. Then again, you'll move left. The moment you move left, you'll come across six comma three, right? Like you move here, then you move to right, but you find a null. You go back, then you come to the left. That's six comma three. So six comma three will say, okay, the size is three. So that's a new node. So you take the six and you insert it. And then you again go back, again go back, again come here. That's the node four. So the node four will make sure four comma two again, not to be inserted because now you have four size. So I'll go back. This will go back. So this is how the traversal will look like. I just played very smart because I know since I'm moving in the rightward direction at first, whichever level I come across, like I came across level three, level two, level one, level zero, whenever I will come across, that will always be the first node from the right side. It will always be the first node from the right side. And that's how you can easily get the right view of a binary tree. If I ask you a question, how to get a left side view of a binary tree, can you tell me in the comment section? Like you can pause and write the comment. What will be the answer? Very simple. Instead of right, left, you will move left, right in order to get the left side view of the binary tree. Simple enough. So we have ended up solving the right side, left side view in a time complexity of B go of N and a space complexity of B go of H. Again, I'm not considering the data structure space complexity because, you know, whenever we are returning an answer, that's generally not considered into your algorithm. We consider the uh, time complexity required in the algorithm. But yes, you can just mention this to the interviewer. He'll be okay with it. So that's the time complexity. Again, height can be at the worst case big often, but generally we do not get such binary trees. The skew binary trees are very, very less. So we have the C++ code on the left and the Java code on the right. So the C++ code will take the root and we will have a vector and then we will call the root, the level as zero and the vector will be passed. Root is null return. If the size is level, add it or go to the right and go to the left with level upgraded to plus one. That's how the code will look like. Simple enough. So I hope you've understood the entire explanation as well as the code. Just in case you did, please, please, please make sure you like this video because it took a lot of efforts to uh, make this entire tree series. Also, if you wish, you can definitely drop in a comment that will keep motivating me to make such further series. Also, if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing because I'm going to bring in such more series in the upcoming future as well. With this, uh, let's wrap up this video. Let's meet in the next lecture. Bye-bye. Take care.